This is a mid 19th century iron campaign bed. And uh, they were made for British army officers to use on their travels. And this one is made out of iron. And it was advertised as not only being very strong and fit for purpose, but also very good for repelling vermin. So let's have a closer look at it. As you can see, we've got large nuts here, which will undo to dismantle it. We'll show you later how it dismantles. But it's very clever in its design, in that there are several elements to it, which are used not only um, as part of the, the design and the decoration, but also they play an important part in keeping the bed's rigidity. So the two main parts are the side rails. And in the side rail, in the middle, you have got a fixed leg, which is hinged. So the two side rails will fold. So you want to stop these two folding when you're on it. And so you have got a crossbar which runs from one to the other with two pins which insert into the legs to keep them at a set distance apart. Likewise, you undo these uh, brass finials and the footboard and the headboard remove, but they also play an important part in keeping it rigid, as do the end rails here. This canvas we've replaced, um, but the leather straps on it are the original ones. And it would have been made in this way. What has been lost with the original, which had just deteriorated so much it was impossible to use, was that it's likely it might have had a stencil on it giving the maker's details. Now the maker's details probably would have not just only been on the stencil, but this would have had a painted pine box, carrying box, and it's very likely that the owner's details and his regiment were on that box, but as well, you probably had the maker's details. Now, as I said, several different makers made them. We've had one by Hill and Millard before. People like Alan and Day advertised them, along with a number of others. So, let's dismantle it and show you how it all works. So now that it's all apart, we can have a little bit of a closer look at how it all works. We've already discussed the um, central stretcher, which keeps the legs apart to stop them folding. And here we have them folded up. So to the middle here, you've got your leg, and we can see that that simply works like that. So that's very important to keep their distance set. If we move to the legs and the end rails, now it's quite important the order that these are put on. And we'll be able to see um, when we get a little bit closer how that all works. First of all, if we just have a look of this section, you might not be able to see it. But let's see if we can get a little bit closer. Here you've got a square section and then it goes round and on this end it's just round. Well that helps us determine the positioning of the legs. So if we look at these two legs you've got a square section hole and a round section hole. So that tells us which end they go on. Now the square section is quite important because it also tells us, because of the square section to the side rails, but this goes on first and then this stretcher bar at the end
goes on second. So we know the order that they go on as well. So little details, but actually quite important in keeping the rigidity of the bed. The brass finials, removable so you can fit on the foot rail and the head rail. And they in turn also help to keep the rigidity of the bed. In fact, these rails, you can see they've got bolts, so they'll also dismantle even further to fit into the packing case. Now, as I said, the canvas has been replaced, but the belt straps are original. And so the belt straps um, at one end, and you've got a single at the foot end with a gusset to take... Um, an end rail are very important in keeping your canvas nice and tight. So you'd use the belt straps to make it nice and tight running from top to bottom and then you've also got your corseted rope to also pull. So there you go. An iron campaign bed, uh, it's going to be mid 19th century. We don't know the maker's name, that information has been lost obviously made uh, to be marketed to a soldier, but of course, um, it could have been used by anyone who wished to travel and uh, made sure that they have a good night's rest. Uh, still usable today, you might want to make a box to put on it or add a mattress to it somehow. And certainly we've sold one in the past to a gentleman who's got a tent permanently set up in his garden and in the summer, because he lives in a hot climate, he sleeps on his campaign bed in the tent. So um, quite interesting and lovely to see that things such as this, 150 years later, are still being put to good use. English iron campaign bed, mid 19th century.